Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dustin Perry from Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International, and you are tuned into the Paranomaly Zone. Look, I know the supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen. It does happen. A ghostly apparition in the dark of night. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, that's his parian. So, Mike, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, computer Patrick and Computer Mike, is this going to be a rockin' sock'em episode? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, is Mike going to take over and run the show the way that his wits will allow him to do so? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> um, Mike, are you good to... Mike, have you turned on your microphone? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I have now. Okay. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I... I- I got to tell you, I found a, a base for the doll head. Oh, you did? Yes. Check this out. It fits in this perfectly. Oh, okay, man. Here's the de- man, look at that oh, thing. Much. Oh, creepy. That's cool. It, well, it fits in there perfect. On, on, it's a candle holder, but it fits in there perfect. That looks pretty cool, man. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not done with it yet, but when I'm done, th- this is going to be a hell of a project. And see, it's going to be pretty awesome. See, Mike, this is more reasons why we need to, like post more videos on youtube actual videos of us doing the episode because then our viewers or slash listeners get to uh look at gems like that that you have uh, created from from the depths of your mind that looks pretty from my, badass. my collection of things i've found at haunted places that's right for those who don't know that is the like the tin doll head that that uh, we discovered at one of the houses one of the abandoned houses in tagus the uh, allegedly haunted ghost town of Tagus, North Dakota. And now Mike is, apparently he's seen floating spirits because now you're looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> what have yeah. you spotted? Oh, I was just looking at my other uh, things I got from the haunted places oh, I see. on my wall. Yeah. Oh, I see. I thought you were seeing your imaginary friend again. No, and I wasn't listening to you. I was just doing my own thing. Well, so. you never listen to me, ever. That's, what, that's <laughs> part of the magic of the show is I usually ramble on endlessly and uh, you ignore me. Yeah, and then the the only words that I hear are, and what do you think about that? <laughs> then you're like, and oh, I have to ramble <laughs> some kind of crap out of my mouth because I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, well right. The first thought that goes through, <laughs> the first thought that goes through Mike's mind uh-huh. is always that. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> uh-huh. um, that's like uh, that's enough of that. No, it is not. It is never enough of. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> onward and upward. Uh, we did record an episode last week. Everybody, <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Friends of the podcast, um, and much to, well, I was going to say much to your chagrin, but actually the exact <laughs> opposite. We we kind of saved our listeners' ear earlobes and ear balls and all that good stuff, ear holes, <laughs> ear balls. <laughs> because what the hell is an ear ball? I don't know. It sounds <laughs> sounds gross. That's all I know. It's like a, a waxy uh, <laughs> protruding ball of that falls out. <laughs> Yummy <laughs> of your ear. Anyway, go ahead. No, that's fine. So we decided to not release that episode because it was a flipping trash heap it, of of an episode. I don't know how it, else to describe it. It was it there was no fire behind it, Mike. Yeah, it, it, it sucked. There, thank you. It did. It it sucked moist pouches or it, whatever that. <laughs> it, it sucked moist ear balls. That's what it sucked. Uh, yeah, it was bad. I, we we did we carried through with it. We did. We finished it and. It's like when we were done, we, we looked at each other like, well, what the hell was that? What, what, you know? Yeah, there was, like you said, there was no fire. Nothing. It's like there was no, but you know, I was getting sick. 
I think. Well, you were, yeah, yeah, and you 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 seemed a little tired. Maybe that was due, yeah, due yeah. with because you were soon to be under the weather, as you mentioned. Uh, I very badly. Yes. Yeah, very badly. I'm glad that you are feeling better. Um, mm-hmm. So we do apologize for not releasing that, but we think it's for your benefit. I did, however, oh, yeah. I did, however, salvage or save the opening like 18 minutes because that was a pretty decent conversation. We got some laughs out of each other, and I posted that on the Patreon page. So if you want to go check that out, very uh, good. Uh, yeah, the Patreon page is up and running again. We'd love to see you guys there. If you like the podcast, you enjoy the Paranormal Zone content, Paranorm- the Patreon page up and running. Uh, no better way to support us. And hey, maybe give it a shot for as little as $1 a month. And you don't have to stick around after that. But we think if you give it a shot, you're going to say, man, there's lots of cool stuff here. Yeah, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it $2. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, the thing is, you have to go at dollar increments. You can't like make it like a dollar and, and 10 cents. You know, it has to go one, two, three, four, five, whatever, you know. Yeah. You know how silly that stuff is. But uh, in all sincerity, we decided to open it up again. Well, I decided to open it up again. <laughs> yeah, I had nothing to do with it. Um, because, hell, <laughs> why not? We, you know, and it's not just um, it's not just an empty blank slate of nothingness. There's a lot of content there. There's over 370 exclusive posts, including over 60 exclusive episodes. I have published a few of them on the uh, main feed here, but hell, there's like 55 other ones that you haven't heard yet. That uh, boy, and there's they are something. They are fun though. In all sincerity, we have a, f- a fun <laughs> time. You think we we you think that we kind of kick back and just say whatever the hell comes to our mind here? Well, go check us out on the Patreon page. It's uh. Maybe even a wee bit more silly at times, but it's all good. <laughs> all good. Yeah. Uh, That's what you're paying for, is that just a wee bit more silly? <laughs> just a wee bit more silly. <laughs> well, you know, because I get, I, I'm going on too long about already. I'm so self-conscious about the uh, the necessary evil of promoting stuff like right. that. I feel like it's like, ah, but uh, you have to do it. We think you guys would enjoy it. You can find all of our old interviews with uh, celeb Guests from the paranormal field like Jason Hawes, Amy Allen, Grant Wilson, Steve Gonzalez, Chip Coffee. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. They're all there. Available. Dave Schrader, Dave Cindy Sh- Kaza. Well, Dave Schrader has been here since the uh, we switched over to Paranormal Zone. Yeah, twice he's been on uh, with us. That's absolutely right. But what I'm saying, Mike, is that yes. those interviews are still available to the main it's podcast. Absolutely. Feed, but you can find ones that are not. Available any longer uh, on the Patreon page. It's it's pretty cool stuff. Mike, are you familiar with what the hell a bug's ear is, by the way? A bug's ear. Yes. Uh, isn't that uh, the saying that people's, boy, you're as cute as a bug's ear. Thank you. Thank you for knowing that because, okay. or for recognizing that, because I wanted to ask you, what the hell does that mean? Hmm. Is there, do you have any background info what the hell is cuter than a bug's ear anyways? Do bugs have ears? Or does like uh, their, well, does their body hear things through vibrations and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think they have like vibratory hairs that are That's on what there. you have. You are <laughs> covered in vibratory hairs. Oh, yeah, like I'm a hairy man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are you are now covered in vibratory hairs and uh, inflicted with psoriatic arthritis. <laughs> yes. God damn it, Mike. Mike yeah. has Mike is literally becoming his own like Mayo Clinic book because yeah. he has been diagnosed with I'd say oh about ten percent of all ailments known to man and uh, man yeah, we, I don't, we, we feel I, for I, you. I'm just going by what the doctors tell me. Oh, I get it. I understand. the newest is this psoriatic arthritis. Yeah, my fingers and toes are messed up. My my psoriatic uh, rash is on the back of my freaking head. Goodness gracious. You know, what am I supposed to do with that? You know? Well. My album, is the hair going to fall out of the back of my head? I'm just going to have this big rash. This big red oozing, you know, just this. Oh, man. You know, kind of soppy kind of red rash on the back of my head. Soppy. I hate that yeah. worse than moist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I have like moist pustules on the back of my okay, head. Okay, enough. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, but anyway, yeah. So that's that's uh, yeah. you know that's something you never hear a waitress say. Would you like moist pustules with that? <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, that's kind of like how I found out how I first found out that I had psoriasis on the back of my head. I went to get my hair cut, and the lady says, "Oh, by the way, you have psoriasis on the back of your head." Oh, good God. And she said, uh, you know, I'm no doctor, but I've seen it a lot. Yeah, exactly. 
so then like you know that was weeks ago and then i go to the doctor the rheumatologist oh you have psoriatic arthritis and uh, oh look the back of my goddamn head it's like damn it i could have i learned that for free from my hairstylist now i'm paying for this crap yeah specialist but eh, whatever that's all you can say, Mike, is eh, whatever. You definitely don't uh, react with it. Uh, no, you don't uh-huh. do that, but I'm sorry. I'm falling in love with that soundbite. I apologize. <laughs> That's enough of that. Yeah, no, see, quit saying that because I don't have that one up. I don't. I'll, then I'll that. just keep saying it then. That's, that's, that's true. You are, very, you are very good at that. See, it's yeah, at, least, well. at least you didn't hear from your hairstylist like, oh, by the way, you're growing an extra limb on your yeah. <laughs> between your shoulder well, blades. Geez, at least I could make some money or something off of that. There you go. You to be a freak in a freak show. There I'd, you go. I'd do it. Hell Wear yeah. a little loincloth and a like so like a hairy jacket that makes me look <laughs> just <you know. laughs> look at a <the> freak. <laughs> well, see, you know that it almost goes full circle because Mike, as a young man, has memories of seeing pain to visit and see the Minnesota Ice Man, and oh, now yeah, that was so awesome. Going Very full awesome. circle now, people will, people will pay their hard earned quarter to go spot Mike the tripedal white. Hairy, vibrating man. <laughs> I don't know. With this really weird red patch on the back of his head. <laughs> oh man, uh, Mike, do we have a topic? An, do we have a topic? And an arm coming out right from the middle of it. Oh God. Yes, we have a great topic, and I, you know, I really want to get into this. You know, get past all this foolishness. Oh yeah. Been, yeah, we apologize for know. that, but uh, it's been a while. Um, for those who are new to the program, this is the Paranormal Zone, your weekly dose of all things, you guess it, paranormal, strange, and mysterious. Uh, believe it or not, we do get new listeners from time to time. My name is Patrick Koffenberg, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host with the ghosts, the paranormal poster boy himself. Um, I'll use the same one as I said last week, Mike. The man who eats demons for breakfast, Mr. Mike Carbno. Now, I'm saying that with affection. I'm saying uh-huh. that with uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh-huh. God damn, you sound like that. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> but 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 this one's perfect though because it's both you and me. I'm the one who goes like ah, and then you finish uh huh. So that's right. Uh huh. Yeah. So <laughs> that's like <laughs> kind of hey. drowned you out on that too, yeah, didn't I? It's okay. It's okay. So that's like if we get visited by aliens and they ask if we are worthy of being abducted, we both respond uh huh. Yeah. So and then after that. Well, that's enough of that. <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> stop. Okay. Oh man, <clears throat> got it. Oh, I, Mike, do you remember me playing this last week? By the way, hopefully this this doesn't curse the episode. But I love this soundbite. Friends of professional wrestling will recognize this. The Yeti. You remember me playing that for you all the time? I do. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good. So, um, yeah. Long story short, back in the w- WCW days, Hulk Hogan was still a good guy at this time. I believe he was, and he was taking on the evil giant. But then, you know, the evil giant wasn't enough of a of an opponent to take down the Hulkster. You know, the big swarmy, swarthy, leather skinned <laughs> muscle man that he is. They needed another giant when they'd been <laughs> they'd been building up this hype for this monster. They every now and then they'd show this giant block of ice, and they'd say, "What's in the ice?" <laughs> <laughs> Coming next week, the ice will open, whatever the hell they said. But at one point, the giant was beating down the Hulkster. Then the ice appears, the ice shatters, the ice cracks, and out walks this lumbering giant, seven foot three, beastly bulging man, known simply as the Yeti. So they were called them the <laughs> they called them the Yeti, but then announcer Tony Schiavone kept pronouncing it the Yeti. <laughs> and he's he was literally like a seven foot tall huge dude but they dressed him like a mummy he was like wrapped in toilet <laughs> toilet paper from the head down to his feet but yet he was some somehow some sort of you know cryptid ice creature well that, that toilet paper that just came because he just left the toilet <laughs> That's before right. he came walking out and he, he got a little he had confused. a rough time in there he didn't have enough room in that stall to work him oh, <laughs> right man. so so anyways, I wanted to play that one again just to spark your memory. Yeah. So the idea for tonight, Mike, we're just going to off-the-cuff conversation all the way here, which is what we are pretty apt at uh, now and then. <laughs> Last week is an exception to that rule. 
Um, yeah. But I came across this quote. I, I believe it was uh, a Native American quote, and I'm going to butcher it. I apologize. But the the essential meaning behind this quote was, as long as you remember your past loved ones, loved ones who have passed on, they will live forever. And I was like, you know, I love that quote, you know. Um, and it's nothing new to any culture by any means. You know, I, I, I get that. There's different variations on it. But it got me to thinking. Do actual physical, spiritual entities, Mike is belching. <laughs> hey, I did. No, it's okay. Are they in any manner, shape, or form, and I'm talking about the spiritual entities that we recognize as ghosts, are they in any manner, shape, or form created slash conjured slash kept alive by the power of the human mind? And I threw that idea out to you earlier this week, and you seemed pretty uh, pretty quick to say, yeah, that sounds good. And yeah, as far as, um, as research goes, it ended then. Because <laughs> yeah. that was about five days ago, and it's still fresh in my brain because I want to have an off-the-cuff, um, totally unhinged, unprepared conversation with you. I do have a couple of articles here that throw out the scientific slash, you know, ah. I don't want to say the pseudo-skeptical point of view, but it's going to talk down to us believers telling us what we really truly are experiencing when we think we are experiencing something of the paranormal. It's going to tell us, yeah. nah, you're not, and this is why. So... I'm looking forward to diving down those articles because I have a feeling it's going to spark a few, uh, I don't know, some emotional feelings, maybe some tirades from Mike. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, you, oh, you, you know, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's not on, on the, the show. He's not on the show. No, but he was on the uh, Kelly Clarkson show the other day. Oh, yeah? What yeah, was he made, expounding on? Not, well, it made me not want to watch the show. <laughs> that guy's a... I mean, he's a physicist. I mean, he knows his stuff, but he's oh, he's, a br- he's a brilliant man, brilliant, very, man. very very brilliant man, and and you know, and he, uh, but he, he kind of falls into that category, the 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 pseudo skeptic. Oh, one hundred percent, I know. think so. Yeah, and he so, kind of, I don't know if it's on purpose. I don't know if he doesn't realize it, but he comes across as kind of condescending. Oh yeah, to yeah. us, he knows what he. He knows what he's doing. To us little minions <laughs> who believe in the possibility of another existence out there, you know what I mean? Um, yes, absolutely. You know, Mike, some of the, some people throughout the history of the earth have been considered at the time the smartest people on earth, right? They mm-hmm. knew no wrong. I'm talking about scientists back in the day. Um, yes. You know what? They were all eventually proven wrong, <laughs> you know, in one oh, way sure. or another. Um like, who's to say that the scientists who yeah. are the who's to say that the most brilliant people in the world right now and what they believe when it comes to the possible existence of the paranormal and that no matter what I'm doing the air quotes evidence they provide for it who's to say five years from now ten years from now a hundred years from now they're going to be blown out of the water and say I can't believe that these people actually thought this it is so not true who's to say right right uh thank you for that feedback that was that was really pretty pretty potent pretty powerful i well i, I enjoyed that i'm just uh, agreeing with everything yeah. okay. that you had uh, just said because and uh, and that's pretty powerful if i agree with you just in general so. it's pretty powerful if mike agrees with me yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I i tend to i tend to agree what what do you think tony shabani okay we're done with the yeti yeah where do you want to start on this one mike because i <sighs> I believe I'm gonna I'm gonna call this episode simply "Do we create ghosts?" I think that's what I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, right. it's, it's simple enough, straightforward to the point. Um, will it generate clicks or listens? I don't know, <laughs> but uh, we shall see. Now, you and I are believers. You've experienced a ton of the paranormal throughout your life, as as have you at times <sighs> that you uh, still need to accept. Yes, which is a perfect segue into a couple of things I want to share before we move on. Yes, yes, I agree. The first one was a uh, a personal experience for me. Now, and this is this is I don't mean to change the mood here from silliness to gloominess or any means, but oh, I'm ready. Let's gloomy it up. (laughs) Well, when I when I shared this story with you, you you made me feel better about it because you said you were very lucky to experience that. And I was oh, like, absolutely. I said, man, that's a great yes. way of looking at it. But 
uh, to be brief, I'd say earlier this summer, around June, I'd say, I found out, it's very sad news, that a, a classmate of mine actually was suffering from a form of cancer that was, you know, it was incurable. And she was seeking a lot of alternative medicines in any number of ways because nothing could really be done for her in the, you know, the modern world of medicine. And I was like, oh, really? That is so, that's, it's terrible because she was just a, she was a wonderful person, a very nice, just a nice person, okay? And I knew that, I had known that she was sick back in June. And where are we at now? We're in November. Long, uh, long story short, but longer <laughs> somehow. What was it? It was not last Monday, but it was two Mondays ago. I had a, a just out of nowhere, out of nowhere, I had a pretty vivid dream with her in it. And she, her and I were visiting each other. We were just talking, getting to know each other. It was a very happy, pleasant dream. I remember feeling in the dreams like, man, why didn't we like get to know each other better in high school? I had no idea you were like this. You know, I didn't know, I, I had no idea you had this sense of humor. I didn't know you believed that and believed this. And it was just a very nice, wonderful feeling dream. You know, a feeling that made you feel warm. And I was like, oh, man, that's... And it just came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. This was two Mondays ago. Two days later, I found out that she passed away. And it really kind of chilled me a little bit. <laughs> and I, there's no other way that I can describe how I felt, but I, I was... I started to think, Mike, no joke. I was like, is, was she making the rounds, so to speak, there? Going to whomever... Whenever, however she could, and kind of perhaps saying goodbye in her own way, you know. Um, I believe you texted me back immediately when I told you that, and you were saying, "Well, you know, you envisioned her as being in the kind of like her final stages or her stages of of death. She was ready to go physically. She was gone spiritually. She was literally traveling at that time, right? That's kind of how yes. you're feeling. Can you elaborate like, on that a little bit? She was at a point of being like imminent, like, you know, on her last breaths where, yeah. you know, she like how, okay. What in conjunction with her passing and your dream, you know, were they right around the same time? Oh yeah, or, absolutely. Yeah. It was, it was, okay. It was, uh, like I said, I had that dream on Monday night and it was Wednesday when I found out that she had passed away. Yeah. So, you know, if she was laying there uh, and getting close to her last breaths and um, it, maybe she was able to leave her body and make these rounds or whatever, or maybe at the time of her death, she had, you know, came to you in a dream, you know, yeah, um, I, it was, it was, it was pretty, I felt, how do I want to say this? It felt profound to me and yeah. it's, and, I feel silly for saying that because it's not, we weren't, unfortunately, like friends, really close friends by any means. You know, we were just always very, you know, nice with with each other when we would interact at school and stuff. But it was, there was never anything. We never hung out anything like that. So I'm like, well, why, why would she have appeared in in my dream? You know, there um, was there is a point in her life and your life when you you know were interacting with each other in in whatever way, however small amount or whatever it is there was something that happened between you two that you may neither one of you may have noticed or you didn't know or she didn't even realize at the time but some kind of a connection was made there and it did something for her that made her feel that that moment or those moments were very special mm. and it because of you you know, and whatever interaction you had during your lives together, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's something there that that she felt was special. That's really, you know, that's really it, interesting looking at it like that. Yeah, it could have been a very little thing that, oh, that, oh, Patrick, that was so nice, or something that right. you said, or so, you know, or something that you did that it just, you know, touched her and made that connection, which made it strong enough to have that connection in death for her. And, you know, I think we also definitely are open-minded to the possibility, you know, like the other side, when you break through that veil, 
I mean, time doesn't exist. We is, we can't even right. be, be, begin to wrap our mind around how that works. And so she could have been visiting maybe her the entire class in different ways. You it, know, exactly at the very same time. at the very same time. You know, some subtle yep. manners and some more profound emotional personal manners. You know, so I mean, exactly that's that's a possibility too. So yeah. Absolutely. I mean, but, you know, rest in peace, Carrie. I'm um, very, very sad. Way, way, way too young. She's only 46 years old, for gosh sakes. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's it's very, very sad. But um, I think, well, as you and I believe, Mike, she is she's enjoying something uh, far more profound right now. Yeah. Somehow, some way, right? Absolutely. Now, segueing to another interesting <laughs> A uh, paranormal experience. This one wasn't a personal one, but it was a family-related experience. Uh, a few months ago, one of our ghost stories guests was my niece Chloe, and she was sharing several pretty far out. I think cool. I understand it making her feel awkward and uncomfortable and creeped out at times. Some pretty vivid, potentially serious paranormal experiences and she texted texted me out of nowhere just the other day by the way mike congratulations are in order to chloe because she just gave birth to a very healthy bouncing ah. baby boy graham awesome. happy birthday to my happy boy well, yeah happy birthday to my uh my newest nephew hello great That's nephew awesome. great nephew yeah, Graham, healthy baby boy. Chloe, everything went well. Congratulations. Can't wait to meet the little guy. But one of the last nights she was at home, she texted me this. And she uh, she's like, well, it's been a while since I've experienced anything, anything here that's actually creeped me out. I'm going to find her text and actually read it, okay? So I don't, yes, good but, idea. don't butcher anything here. Okay, she goes, so this was sent on Tuesday earlier this week. She goes, well, it's been a while since something creeped me out here. So with that being said, <laughs> Harrison has been sleeping since 740. Harrison was, is, was her then youngest boy. And I just put Oliver in his room. That's her oldest boy. And he's, you know, they're both little, little, tiny little kids. And Oliver is laying in bed looking at his books. I, Chloe, went back downstairs after leaving Oliver's room and grabbed the monitor off the couch in the living room, looked at it, looked at Harry sleeping then push the button to switch to Oliver's room, Ollie's room, and I see that he is sitting on his bed with his book. So she's looking at the video monitor right now. She sees both Harrison and Ollie. Harrison's sleeping. Ollie is sitting on his bed with his books. When I, Chloe, heard running in the hallway that stopped at the top of the steps, and a voice then said, Yoo-hoo! Like not whispering, but not shouting, just such a weird volume where you want to subtly, subtly get someone's attention. <laughs> mm. um, she's looking at both of her kids, Mike, on the video monitor. Here's the footsteps, which she has shared before on the podcast. They have heard right. several times upstairs these darn footsteps, someone running, shuffling, whatever you want to call it. And then the little childlike voice, because she, she elaborates later on. Go yoo at the top of the steps when she's looking at both of her kids. What the hell is going on there? <laughs> My goodness. And, and, and one of the kids has said before that he has seen somebody at the top of the stairs. Yes, absolutely. Not long before that, he had seen right. something at the top of the stairs. And that thing was kind of creepy looking to, I mean, if you take what he described as is and you visualize it in your mind and the way that Chloe visualized it. You know, he's like, who's that at the top of the steps? And she's like, who who are you talking about? And he's like, that up there, up there. And he was like, I believe, man, I should look for that text message as well, as well so I don't butcher it. Oh, I lost it. I lost all those old ones. But he saw some figure, some human-like figure up at the top of the steps with his, with his mouth open. I remember that was part of the description. And, Jeez. and she, <laughs> Chloe, she's like, uh, what? <laughs> And there's something going on at that house. Um, go listen to that episode, Ghost Stories, episode three, I believe it was. It's either episode two or episode three of the Ghost Stories series. Just to get a little glimpse into Chloe's life at this house, I need to get there. I need to get some recorders set up, Mike. And uh, Yeah. 
that but, definitely man. needs some investigating done there. But Chloe did say she's like, it was so quiet, she couldn't tell if it was a boy or a girl, but she said it sounded very playful when it did, mm. did the yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. As I mentioned that to Bridget, and that kind of freaked her out, too, and she's like, that's another kid spirit up there trying to get her attention, like, hey, I'm up here, too. You know, right. don't, don't just look at your kids. <laughs> I'm here. Yoo-hoo. Mm. Kind of cool. That, that's pretty awesome. Have you experienced anything lately, Mike, in your house? Any more cupboard doors opening in the kitchen, or... Any weird, no, wild, no. wacky stuff? No more ghost cats lately? Or? Nope. Nope. Been pretty quiet. Well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it does. Mike's laying in bed, and they're both sound asleep. First thing he hears. Uh-huh. And it's like, damn it! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just... I'm going to fall in love with that button. I, what, what, am I, what do I mean I'm gonna, going to? I already have, so... But I do need to uh, go over my um, abstract for my house. And see if there was a rosemary that has lived here at any time. Thank you for saying that. I get this isn't the part of the shameless plug, but I did post a, <laughs> a video clip last week on the Patreon page from my first visit to your house back in 2021 when we were down in the basement and we were doing like a spirit app session on your your iPad. Then you had a, a, a right. an app on your iPad. Yep. And I was filming with my cell phone, and man, we got some super clear replies. I mean, they they just seemed. To me, it struck me as more powerful than a lot of the spirit box stuff you get. Because, I mean, let's face it, a lot of it, 99% of it is very random and it could be anything. But they seem like absolute direct replies. At one point you ask, is there anyone here with us? Are you here with us? We hear an immediate voice say, no, which is interesting. And then you hear, we're stuck. That's the one that kind of grabbed me because it's like, yeah. are you here with us? And you hear in a male voice, we're stuck. How random of a reply is that if it's not legit in its reply? You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. And then there's also some weird, wild, wacky orbs, orb-like stuff, including one that was super, super bright. It started off very faint, turned very, very bright, and then kind of faded off again and floated away it's really interesting you guys should go check it out at the patreon page but uh, and that's in my basement that's in your basement yeah there. yes now have you had personal experiences down there mike me besides when uh, we were down there no i i've never i never have um i used to kind of get a creepy feeling down there i mean if you look closely um the place used to be set up down there for people to Either somebody was living down there or staying down there. Like part of the floor is uh, tiled and you can see where, um, well, there used to be a sink down there actually even like, you know, a very old antique yeah. porcelain sink. And then. Because um, this house was built in 1880, boys and girls. Eight, 1882, yes. That, and, oh, yeah, 1882, yes. And uh, it just, I just get the feeling that somebody was actually spending a lot of time down there staying down there living down there whatever and and in the other part of the room you can see where there's a uh they must have had like this, some extensive workbench because they had these things for hanging tools and mm. all these plugins very old plugins but uh yeah it, it's I, i've gotten creepy feelings down there but uh nothing there was one actually happened one clip that we posted a while back too was Mike, and we talked about it on the show, Mike was tearing down his uh, wall yeah. next to the steps to the basement because, man, wouldn't it have been cool if something was creepy, dead, buried in there? Well, it looked like that part that was actually filled in that, that could have been a door at one time. That's, yeah. And that's what we went for. Exactly. Exactly. So, so if you want to watch Mike sitting on the steps tearing his wall apart, that's another thing you can see on the Patreon yeah. page. Yeah. Tearing apart a very old beadboard wall. <laughs> Hey, it was fun. We had a blast. It was cool. So, um, yeah, something's something's going on in your house. That reply, though, we're stuck. That's something, Mike. Yeah, right. Now, Mike, let's put our thinking caps on, okay? I got it. Do we in any way create literal physical ghosts? Like the entities themselves, are they mind? Are they created simply from the power of the mind? I know a lot of people think poltergeist activity is purely created from the power of the mind. I mean, that's a whole kind of separate argument itself. But I'm talking about like the actual, well, for lack of a better term, like if you spot like an apparition, 
Is that something that you have actually conjured up? You have created on your own from scratch, from the back deepest depths of your dirty, dirty little mind. Is that something that's possible at all in your opinion? I would say that's very possible. I mean, and it can be uh, possible anywhere from the point of it being purely imagination and a hallucination Mm -hmm. all the way to the other end where the power of your, of a person's mind that we don't even know fully has tapped into something either by accident or it, it just happened on its own, the ability and the energy to either project or create an apparition, a ghost, a spirit, uh, their, their, their parent, you know, that they miss maybe the emotion mixed with that energy. I I think that's very possible. I know. I agree. I agree with you that that is absolutely a possibility. Now, does it account for every single ghost sighting in the history of earth? No, no, absolutely not. But does it account for some of them? Sure. Absolutely. It could, uh, absolutely. It probably did. And it probably will continue to do so. So I get you on that one. It does. Yeah, absolutely. And could. And, and may will. will. And, and, and might. <laughs> uh, Mike, uh, Patrick, and computer Mike, is it a possibility? Uh, uh-huh. Okay. uh-huh. Thank you. <laughs> I just have to check in with uh, computer Patrick and Mike every now and then, okay? so Yes. They have, they have a very limited uh, vocabulary, don't you, computer Patrick and Mike? Uh, uh-huh. Okay. Yes, but right. those uh-huh consecrates everything that we say and ask. <laughs> Do you think is the this true? Uh huh. Are the listeners sick of that soundbite? Uh huh. Well, fine. I'll keep playing it then. You know what they say about that? That's enough of that. Uh huh. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I think I'm going to pull out the old article here, Mike. Let's get some. Uh, let's some. Yes. Let's get some. Pull ju- out the old one and the new one if you got it. Let's get some uh, juices flowing here because I know. Oh, okay, I'm, let's make it moist. There, that's mo- oh, there's that damn word again. Just don't you, say soppy. I, I don't want to hear soppy. Soppy moist ever pouch. again. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Now this is an article. It's from. <coughs> excuse me. It's from APA.org. It's American, <laughs> it's American Psychology Association. Psychological Association. And this is the guest interview is Chris French, expert slash PhD. No, he is. He is a... No relation to Victor French. <laughs> but the, the the looks are striking. I'm telling you that oh, really? right now. No, uh, no, not. Could be possibly uh, uh, related to uh, Mr. French. Um, or maybe J.J. French from Twisted Sister. Who the hell knows? Or the founder of uh, French's Mustard. Who knows? <laughs> That's it. You got it. That is who this got guy it. looks just like. Mr. Chris French, Ph.D. He is the head of the Anomalistic Psychology Research Unit in the Psychology. Anomalistic, Anomalistic yeah. Mm. Psychology Department at Goldsmiths University in London. He's in the London. Get it old Brish going there. <laughs> um, he's a fellow, a fellow of the British Psychological Soci- uh, Society and of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. Really? Yes, yes. He's published <laughs> over 150 articles covering a wide range of topics within psychology. His main area of research is the psychology of paranormal beliefs and anomalous experiences. And he goes on as such. I'll fly through this stuff, okay? Um, the interviewer the interviewer goes on to describe him and says that during in his studies of psychology in his studies <laughs> of <laughs> paranormal beliefs and anomalous experiences, he is looking for psychological explanations for phenomena, including near death experiences, ESP, ghostly visitations, for example. And like I said, he's written over one hundred and fifty journal articles and book chapters on said topic. So he goes on to say, introducing himself, he says, anomalistic psychology is primarily focused upon trying to come up with, and where possible, put to the test, non-paranormal explanations, usually psychological explanations, for ostensibly paranormal experiences. So he's like, so all kinds of things that you've mentioned or you think of, like people who think they've been abducted by aliens, people who think they've seen ghosts, or that they have psychic powers, and so on. 
He says, my working hypothesis, and he has to emphasize that it's a working hypothesis, is let's assume paranormal forces do not exist. Can we explain those claims in other terms? Okay, that sounds fine. That's fair. Fair sure. argument. Because he's like, you know, let's argue that it doesn't exist. But then he says, I clearly identify as a skeptic, which is fine. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I do like this. He says, an important part to me of skepticism is to always be open to the possibility that you might be wrong. Hey, he's no... Uh, I love that. He's no damn pseudo-psychic or pseudo-skeptic. I, <laughs> Sorry. I, I like this man. Well, so far. So, so far, far, yeah. Okay. But he says, new, new evidence might come along that makes you revise your opinion. For the time being, I have to say I don't believe that paranormal forces exist. And the interviewer says, so what are, the, what are some of the psychological or cognitive factors that drive belief in the supernatural? And he goes on as such. I have to paraphrase a lot of this, okay, so, so bear with me. He goes, give the, I'm just to give one example. One of the phenomenon that they're most interested in is called sleep paralysis, and we've talked about that before. He says it's very, fairly common in its most basic form. But for a few people, they get very, very vivid hallucinations while they're having experiences as they lie there in their bed. Now, if these people already believe in ghosts or demons and so hard, so, so hard, so on, it's not surprising that they will sometimes opt for that as an expl explanation. I cannot speak. You said so hard. <laughs> I did say so hard. <laughs> anyway, go, yeah, go. That's enough of that. He goes on, there's a whole range of cognitive biases, and trust me, this isn't going to be turn into, this isn't going to devolve into story time with PK again. I'm sorry, but I have to share these. <laughs> the tones of PK. Oh, the dulcet tones. <laughs> the whiny, nasally voice trying to <laughs> the put you. The dulcet th tones. <laughs> My name is Patrick, and I'm going to read for a while. I hope you don't mind. Don't mind, as I'm sitting Go on ahead. a squeaky chair. <laughs> you know, I'm just pulling the chair across the floor. Until yeah. I get closer to the bed. Oh, yeah. Talk about a state of relaxation, baby. So, anyway, let's go. Let's go, Patrick. I want to hear it. Uh, you hush. Don't push me. Don't rush me. <laughs> God dang it. So he says right. there's a whole range of cognitive biases that are also relevant to this topic. Just to give you a couple of examples, the very first systematic investigation of the unreliability of eyewitness testimony was actually carried out in the context of a fake seance back in the Victorian era. So again, a lot of paranormal claims are based on anecdotal evidence, and we've always got that problem of, well, how reliable is that anecdotal evidence? So he's basically saying, I kind of get it. You know, How reliable is someone who's telling you they saw a ghost? Right. I mean, I, yeah, I get it. I mean, yep. that's half the reason why, you know, eyewitness testimony gets tossed out in court because it's eyewitness it, testimony yeah. and it's they can make mistakes. All you, yeah, all you can do is have it as a personal experience if it really happened and that's that's it. Good story. You know, even if the person's being honest, they could be wrong, obviously. Right. When it comes to, I'm back to the article here. When it comes to a paranormal belief, there are a whole host of cognitive cognitive biases problems that we have with probabilistic probabilistic reasoning for example now the questioner says i think it's pretty interesting that you studied sleep paralysis it's something i experienced a great deal of when i was a college student i think you found that's true among college students they go on about sleep paralysis and he says it's a weird state weird hybrid state between normal waking conscious and a dream conscious this. Yeah, we 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 kind of get that. I'm flying through mm -hmm. this again, Mike. Yep. All right. Do you have to go to? Do you have to go potty? You getting a little jittery? <laughs> no, I'm fine. You getting a little jittery? You're, Was I jittery? <laughs> you're getting you're doing, you're doing your little jittery. Mike, go potty dance. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> Patrick, can I get to go potty? Can I go potty? No, I'm fine. Uh, you, you can. Ask. I got hemorrhoids. I'm and I'm sitting in a hard chair. <laughs> <laughs> Too much information. Oh man, it's, alive. It's, it's wicker and there's no no seat on it, and it's got four legs and one of the feet's gone. So I'm bouncing back and forth like that. That's probably the jittery that you see. Okay, I'm just making sure. Anyway, just so we're clear, um, 
Just so we're clear, everybody, and please stick with us. Mike does not have to go potty. He just has hemorrhoids. That's all. Uh, but I appreciate your concern. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, he says. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, I, need, I need to do a better job of uh, spelling some things out. I get that. But that also, I'm so self-conscious of annoying the hell out of our listeners. So that's why I'm just flying through things. Yeah. And that's annoying in itself. I know it is, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Just go. Uh, interviewer says, another area that you've studied is the idiomotor effect. The fact that people can make movements if they're not consciously aware of. Supposedly behind the reasoning before dowsing, or the effects of dowsing for water, or <sighs> Ouija boards. She says, I found this especially interesting because when I was a kid, Junior high school, I had a friend, and she had she and I became obsessed with the Ouija board that I had had, and we would use it together. It would spell out all kinds of words. It would send us on expeditions around the neighborhood. It had a whole series of personalities and rituals that we were supposed to go through. And she, she can, continues to go on about their experiences. She wraps it up by saying, so how does your work, doctor, explain what may have been going on there? We were not in touch with what they call the Ouija control, the board would tell me that there was a place called Ouija Control. And he says, that's a new one to me. <laughs> I like the idea. But then he says... Ouija Control. Yeah. But then he says, I think we can pretty... Ground sure Control to Ouija Time. Oh. Sure. No, Ouija okay. Control. Yeah, that's Major what I meant. Okay. <laughs> I screwed that up. <laughs> Get your joke okay. straight before you, before you <laughs> barf them on out to the hey, listening Hey, audience. I only half pulled it out of my ass. I didn't get it. I didn't do it right. You got go it, ahead. You got it past his hemorrhoids, and that's where it stopped. You're right. Sorry. Right, let's go. We've said, <laughs> we've said the word hemorrhoids far too often in this episode. I apologize. Hemorrhoidal tissue. Oh, God. Tissue. Tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a tissue for your hemorrhoidal tissue? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a, a round okay, Operation enough. H wet pad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay, the doctor <sighs> says, now I think we can be pretty sure that, in fact, between you, you were pushing the little planchette, but you weren't consciously aware of it. So what, what a lot of people say is that they don't think they are, but they actually are moving this damn little planchette. Well, and I think that's very possible as well. Oh, sure. No, absolutely you know. it does. Yeah. Now, he actually goes on to say that he had a friend back in the day. Every now and then, they would go out on a Friday night. They'd go to a pub, and they'd have a few little drinks. Have a few pints. And he said it was a regular thing that we would do when we got back to our, you know, wherever they lived. Just to entertain themselves. They pulled out the old Ouija board. And he says his personal experience, it does feel, very much feel like you are pushing it or very much feels like you are not pushing it, but you are, in fact, are. He says, an interesting, interesting to him, one of the nicest illustrations of the fact that this is what we call the idiomotor effect, where basically non-conscious muscular movements were basically unconscious, non-conscious muscular movements. So he goes, again, if we look back in the history of this, at the time of the heyday of seances back in the Victorian area, another craze that caught on initially from America and then on over to Europe was called table turning or table tilting. Mm-hmm. This no, not uh huh. It is uh -huh. yes, right. This was again supposed to be a way of contacting those pesky spirits, Mike. Where you take a small wooden table, the sitters would put their hands on the tabletop and they'd ask questions. On a good session, the table would shudder in response to the questions. On a very good session, it could end up even end up. It appeared that people were trying to chase the table around the room, trying to keep their hands in contact with it. All very, 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 very exciting stuff. Now, according to the attention of a Mr. Sir Michael Faraday, he liked the idea, rather than just dismissing it, he thought, that's interesting, let's have a look at it. There are two possibilities on this, okay, of what's actually maybe causing this. One is that some external force, possibly a spirit or a ghost, is actually moving the table. Or in case of the Ouija board, the planchette. Or a wine glass. What have you. This Sir Michael Faraday devised a number of ingenious experiments, Mike. I believe that. Dr. French mentions this one. He says instead of having people put their hands directly on the tabletop, he had layers of waxed paper on the tabletop, and they put their hands on the top of the layers of waxed paper. 
And he says, now, if you think about it, if the table moves to the right, if the table moved on its own, the wax papers, the hands will tend to drag behind a little bit and the wax papers would spread out to the left. If the hands are pushing the table, then the table would drag between the hands a little bit and the wax papers will be pushed to the right. Mm. So you can actually guess what he actually found out. So again, this wax paper experiment is saying, no, 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 you're not moving these tables at all. This is a scientific explanation, okay? So you get the, and th- this is way too long. I'll go on and on and on if I'm allowed to, and I don't want to. I just, I simply don't. You... <laughs> I, I simply do not want to. I think I am saving our listeners, okay? I think okay. I'm saving you. Now let's pop. Hey, I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> In your personal belief, Mike, your personal experiences, I know yes. you and I messed around with the Ouija board. If you had to say one out of 10, pick a number, how many of those alleged paranormal experiences conjured up through a Ouija board, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, are actually caused subtly, subconsciously by the users of the said Ouija board. Oh, boy. Huh. You know, I'm going to go kind of, uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to go kind of high on this. You are? Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, oh, boy, eight pushing a nine, I think. Well, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I tend to agree with you on that one too. No, I wouldn't go as far to say a ten. I mean, you no. kinda, you know what my feelings are about Ouija boards. You yeah, you get scared. I, <laughs> you don't like them. Your Catholic childhood know. comes up. But anyway, a, but again, you know, I've known people who I trust who claim to this day that they've had legit experiences using one of those things. So I mean, sure. I'm not going to call them a liar by any means. Oh, absolutely no. Now, how about on a scale from one to ten? Same question, but dowsing rods. What do you think about those? Uh, One to ten being the lowest amount of humans actually causing the activity, ten being the highest amount of humans causing the activity. And now we're talking about dowsing rods. Yeah, I'd put that at about an eight as well. Yeah, that one is even more so for me than even Ouija yeah. boards. That one, to me, just the physics of it, it seems to me would be very, very easy to move those suckers around and you swear right. to God you're not doing a damn thing about it. Yeah. I just, like, the just, subtle, it's yeah. like you're, even the subtle retraction of your skin could move the yeah, damn thing, absolutely. you Absolutely, know? yeah. So, I guess, you know, I, I get it. I get it. But to just kind of use those as examples, I mean, Dr. French here, you're using very basic examples. Give us more stuff. Explain away when people see an actual full-bodied apparition right in front of their face. I mean, is that something that you can say, well, they're subconsciously without realizing it. You know, they are projecting yeah. the image of their whatever. I mean, we talked yeah. about earlier tonight. That's a possibility, but just automatically dismiss everything. And this guy yeah. seemed like he was kind of cool. Like he said right away, he's a skeptic, but he thinks he has to, which is the proper definition of a skeptic, Mike. You have to look at the possibility of Abs- things actually existing. Absolutely. He's no damn pseudo skeptic. So I like that. Right. Absolutely. You know, and it's like, you know, if, if people like this can also say if uh, a group of people on a, on a ghost hunt, they, they all of them saw a shadow person or all of them saw a full bodied apparition, mm-hmm. they, would, they would put that as, oh, that's a, a group hypnosis. That's, you know, a group hallucination. You know, mm-hmm. you know there's always going to be something that comes up that they're going to say. To me, you know, the, no. the group experiences are hard ass ev- evidence of something legit going on there to me it, it i mean i agree it just seems too simple of an explanation as like you said well they're all under the same influence of something you know they're under whatever what how, however you want to describe it yeah and again, that's more unlikely than actually seeing something i believe oh you know? sure sure right you know and again i i totally get that idea of like I don't know if hypnosis is the right term, but I get where you're going on that, and I I, right, I, yeah. I understand it because I know one of you're familiar with the band The Doors, right, Mike? Oh, absolutely, I love The Doors. And, you know the enigm the the I can't speak tonight. The enigmatic, enigmatic. Help me with enigmatic. that word. Enigmatic. Yes, I was Jesus say, Christ. Enigmatic. God dang, I can't speak. Um, lead singer. The brilliant Jim Morrison. Some would say he's just a drunken buffoon. I think he is a very creative, wonderfully right. artistic, uh, soulful Beautiful, individual. Beautifully artistic. Yeah, absolutely. 
you but know, he, just yeah, poetic. But he was fascinated with the power of the mind. The the fast. He was fascinated with the psyche slash possible psychological control of large groups. You know, and he a lot of times he would kind of push that idea of his that he, to the to the test during concerts and stuff. He would want to see what how far he could push the the audience to you know to a, a to a degree because he doesn't want to <laughs> cause a riot at every damn at every damn concert. You know, he wanted to push it to a degree just to expound upon to elicit as an example, you know, the potential power that the voice the mind could have over a large group of people if they're all in the same mindset, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. he, he could almost get to the point of saying, and he never did this, he could say, all right, go, go kill. And they, somehow there'd be this, you know, surge of this mass of humanity going, uh, not even realizing they're doing it, you know? So I kind of get yeah. that. I kind of get that. But that's, to me, it's different than actually a group of people seeing something. I don't know about the power of a, someone else to cause mass hallucination as mm. opposed to, you know, a mass reaction well, of a sort. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Jim Morrison, wouldn't he make everybody see the lizard or something like that? Ah, uh, well, a lot of people thought they saw his little lizard between his legs. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, that's that's another controversy all altogether. Uh, no one will know for sure, Mike, but... Uh, yeah. He was kind of a scapegoat. The people kind of, the Florida police kind of uh, went a little over their limits, their reach here, and took advantage of Mr. Morrison as a, to make an example out of him. But Swiped him right off stage. Yeah, a couple different areas, or a couple different states that happened yeah. to him. <laughs> okay, Mike, moving forward. Yes. With this wonderful conversation. Now, this isn't something, this, this isn't an episode we're going to throw away, is it? Is it been okay? Oh, hell no. No, this is so much better than the last one. Okay. And that's showing you, that's telling you how bad the last one was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just flying through some of these articles here. This one is from snexplores.org, and that stands for Science News Explorers. The article is aptly titled, The Science of Ghosts. And the headline says, here's what may explain why some people see, hear, or feel a spooky presence. So I have a feeling I'm not going to like this article that much. Goes on to say, ghost stories are lots of fun. Especially on Halloween. Ooh, you know, kind of getting a condescending tone. Mike's got a condescending train blasting through Enderlin right now. Yeah, it's pretty close. So, but some people actually believe that ghosts are real. Can you believe that, Mike? Some nincompoop out there believes there are such things as ghosts. Well, I'm a nincompoop. That word needs to be used more often. Nincompoop. nincompoop. What the I hell is the what is the etymology of that? Hmm. Nincompoop. It's it's got to be Norwegian or something. <laughs> I think. Did I use that word right? Did I use the wrong word? Etymology. I have no idea. And I, nothing I, against Norwegians, because I am very proud of my Norwegian heritage. Of course. As well. I think I'm getting that word wrong. Etymology is like the biology of bugs or something. Bugs. Entomology. Is that what Entomology I'm is the bug thing, yeah. That's entomology. Oh, okay. Okay, listeners, there, help us out. Is that entomology? <sighs> <laughs> you know Sorry. What? That deserves. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm wrong I'll just assume I'm wrong so uh, correct me everybody as we move forward do that because he hates it I hate it. he I hate hates it. being corrected well I hate just being wrong <laughs> yeah, that's all it is I, I don't mind being he hates being caught being wrong <laughs> <laughs> anyway go ahead all right going forward <laughs> sorry says here that uh, Chapman University in Orange, California runs a yearly survey that asks people in the United States about their beliefs in the paranormal. As of the most recent article, this was back in 2018, so not that mm. recent. says here 58% of those polled actually agreed with the statement places can be haunted by spirits. And almost one in five people from the United States said in another survey that they believe they've seen or been in the presence of a ghost. Oh, those weirdos. Hmm. They're all liars. All of them. 
Yeah, well. That says on ghost hunting TV shows, people use scientific equipment to attempt to record or measure spirit activity. <laughs> but, but I'm sorry, Mike. By the way, a few episodes of Ghost Adventures ago, a few weeks mm-hmm. ago, never thought I'd see this. Maybe I mentioned this already. We actually got to see Zach Bagans perform a drunken, <laughs> a field sobriety test on one of his team members. Mr. Billy Tolly was taking a few shots of the old whiskey because they were at a saloon, Mike. They were trying to get the spirits to mm-hmm. feel all comfortable and cozy up to him. I think I did mention this. But I, oh, yeah, we got to see Zach run the old field sobriety test, and he cleared it in, like, one second. He's like, walk this straight line. And he's like, okay, you're fine. <laughs> but he's like, for the integrity of our investigation, I am forced to give Billy a field sobriety test. No oh, boy. It's like, no, you weren't forced to do it, Zach. You just... No. Dramatically speaking, he was. <laughs> I thought it was pretty freaking funny, though. But says, you know, any numerous creepy photos and videos of a ghost make it seem like these ghosts exist on these TV shows. However, according to this article, none of these offer good evidence of ghosts. Yeah, we get it. Some are hoaxes simply created to fool people. The rest only prove that equipment can capture noise, images, or other signals that people don't expect. And these are likely explained away as a ghostly phenomenon. Again, it's kind of making you, it sounds so condescending to me. It's like something shows up on audio, we, do, we can't explain it, and so us dummies automatically assume it's paranormal. Mike, I know from personal experience, you and I are the exact opposite. Me, to a fault, I know I annoy the hell out of you. <laughs> we could pick up an EVP that says, hey, dummy, Patrick, I'm over here, and it's not you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not anyone else. And I'll sit there and go, hmm, was that a cat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's you. Was that a cat? And you know, how many cat? times have we had our names come out? You know, asking, well, who who who, mm-hmm. who do you know who I am? Me or whatever. And our names come up. Yeah, they do. It happened in the Stram um cemetery. Yeah. Um it at um I'm drawing the a Vergus Trail. The Vergus, the Vergus Trails, yeah. When you said, you, yeah. you know, this is, you know, who's the guy basically running the recorder? The video was me, and guess what popped up? Patrick. I mean, clear as day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. But it goes on to say here that not only are ghosts supposed to be able to do things that science says are impossible, also scientists using, oh, sorry, I skipped the line there. Ha, 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 Such as turning invisible or pass through walls like ghosts do. But also, scientists using reliable research methods have found zero evidence that ghosts exist. Now, do you believe that, Mike, that there is zero evidence that ghosts exist as the term evidence is understood by you and I? I think there's a lot of evidence. It's just not, it's not taken seriously enough. It's not believed enough. It's automatically tossed aside. and it's. It, mm-hmm. There's evidence that people refuse to believe that as evidence. I'd say that. Well, that's you. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay, I can't. Touche. I'll just say that. Touche. What scientists have discovered, though, are lots of reasons why people might feel they have had ghostly encounters. And this is where we finally get into a little bit of data here. It says you simply can't trust your eyes, ears, or your brain. So toss everything out that you experience because you can't believe anything. So that time, we're all crazy. We're all crazy. That time that ghost slapped you in the face, Mike, you imagined that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the time, you know, some pesky little horny female ghost yanked your trousers down, that didn't happen. As ma- that, no matter how much you wanted it ha- to be real, it didn't happen. That didn't happen. <laughs> I only told that story once and I didn't mean it. I'm oh, so sorry. No, I didn't tell that story. That never happened. Anyway, go ahead. Well, the first the first example is, of course, again, sleep paralysis, and I'm not going to go into this one again because it's the same same argument. Um, this next one is basically the idea of pareidolia, which is you pareidolia, know, where you kind of you know that, you know you put those under your lamps and stuff on a end table. That's what you get after you develop hemorrhoids. Is Can the, we get a doilia for over here on the end table? Frank, put the ashtray on a doilia. A doilia? 
Okay. A doily. Uh, you know what I mean. I, no, I got you. I got you. That was funny. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, you didn't laugh. <laughs> Barry, Patrick's being an ass. He's not laughing at my funny stuff. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Faces Barry. and clouds like pareidolia. Uh, so yeah. a par- pareidolia is like a haunted doilia. <laughs> That's two doilias. <laughs> you got a pareidolia. You got one on each table. Go ahead. <sighs> Okay, I'll, I'll go on now. I am ready. It says, have you ever felt your phone buzz? Then check to find that there was no message. <laughs> there was no message after feeling your phone buzz. Have you heard someone calling your name when no one was there? Have you ever seen, Mike, a face or figure in a dark shadow? Well, Mike, these misperceptions also count as hallucinations, according to David Smales, psychologist in England <laughs> at Northumbria <laughs> University in Newcastle upon Tyne. Holy crap, that's a long sentence. Okay. So, Smales? <laughs> David Smales, psychologist in England at Northumbria. Did you know that he gave a speech there? Did he? Smales, yes. He said, it's easy to grin when your ship comes in and and you've got the stock market beat, but the man worthwhile is a man who can smile when his shorts are too tight in the seat. (laughs) Smales. You said Smales. No, that is totally unplanned, everybody. His name is literally Smales, and Mike had the flippin' Caddyshack quote at his hand, at yeah. at, at the ready. <laughs> I, I had no idea. Now, was it Smales or Snails? It was Smales, wasn't it? In Caddyshack? Judge Smales. Judge Smales. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Rodney called him Smells. But... Smells. <laughs> hey, Smells. <laughs> now, Dr. Smales... Says just about everyone has had such experiences. Most of us just ignore them, but some may or must turn these experiences to ghosts as the only possible explanation. And again, that kind of sounds condescending to me. It's like, uh, these it, silly it buffoons. Now he says, We're used to our senses giving us accurate information about the world. So when experiencing a hallucination, our first instinct is usually to believe is usually to believe it. If you see or feel the presence of a loved one who died, for instance, and trust your perceptions, then it has to be a ghost, says Smales. That's easier to believe than the idea that your brain is simply lying to you. So what do you think about that off the top of your head, Mike? If you hmm. see a passed on loved one right in front of you, you feel their presence. You smell your dad like you did, that very dad odor that only you could recognize in the car when you're driving to work that one day was your brain yes. simply lying to you no no it was a, a totally a according to dr smales it was according to dr smales it was lying your brain is yeah. a big big fat liar yeah well he wears an ugly hat as well your brain does no oh, smales oh Sm- <laughs> okay well, I bet you get a bowl of soup with this <laughs> right. a free bowl of soup that's right a free bowl of soup yeah Oh, it looks good on you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rodney anyway. Dangerfield's right here with us, everybody. Anyway. So, but I, I think it's safe to say, I don't mean to assume, Monty, uh, Mike. I just called you Monty. <laughs> Why the hell Monty. did I want to call you Monty? Oh, my God. <laughs> you look like a Monty. No, I don't. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to start calling you Monty. Well, don't just don't call me full Monty. Ooh, Mary might <laughs> like that. Anyway. So... I think it's safe to assume, Monty, sorry, Mike, that you don't believe that your brain was lying to you when you experienced your, Absolutely your, not. Or when you told you feel that super strong sensation that your dad is kind of teasing you, playing jokes on you in the house. He's the one who may have hidden those items, you know, a few months back that suddenly appeared, reappeared in your house. That That's very possible. But at the same time, you know, like, you know, your imagination can be such a strong thing. And if you have, you know... Uh, you're having a, a a thought of missing your parent or something, and it's a uh, um, it gets your your brain going and and uh, uh, starts kicking up memories, and um, maybe that can manifest a spirit, you know, or make it appear. Maybe it can. Maybe it can conjure up a literal hallucination. Exactly, a hallucination or 
the actually the real thing. I mean, oh, where, oh, you're saying both that's possibilities. Where, that's okay. where I was saying that you know it can be from one end to the other. You know, like it can be actually, you know, bringing that spirit. You know, uh, you know, or or giving that spirit energy with your thoughts, with your emotions, the high state of emotions. Your, exactly. Yeah. Right. I like that. I like that as being a reason for both possibilities, both for creating potential, like you know, hallucinations for lack lack of a better term, but also literally helping give the energy, the power for right. whoever, whomever it may be to make an appearance and say, Hey, I'm here. You know, I feel your emotions, you know, and I kind of, mm-hmm. I'm thriving through that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I totally dig that. I think that's an absolute possibility. Uh, he goes on here. It says the brain has a tough job. Information from the world bombards you as a mixed up jumble of signals. It says the eyes take in color, the ears take in sounds, the skin senses pressure. The brain works to make sense of all these makes a sense of this big old mess. This is called bottom-up processing. Did you know that, Mike? Bottom-up processing is what that's called. Really? The, the brain is very good at it. It's so good that sometimes finds meaning in meaningless things. This is going back to finally what we were calling the haunted doilias, pareidolia. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you experience it whenever you stare at clouds and see rabbits, ships, or faces. Mm-hmm. Or gaze at the moon and see, guess what? A face. So, I mean, yes, it happens. Of course it happens. It's like the Rorschach test type thing. You look at a oh, absolutely. Yeah. blob the of ink. The matrixing and things like that. Of course. Of course. Because you're looking, your brain is forming images of what it knows. You know, right. it's trying to make sense of what it sees. Yep. And it's it's forming what it, your brain is interpreting and what you mm-hmm. can, what your brain will accept. At, well, at 100%. But again... Your brain, especially one that maybe already kind of ultra, ah, I shouldn't say ultra, maybe apt to being skeptical, your brain isn't going to sit there and conjure up the image of an apparition when you are closed-minded to that possibility. And why I'm saying that is because people, there are a lot of people, not me, Mike, believe it or not, who believe that's an absolute farce and, you know, the possibility of ghosts, that is, but yet they see one. And that totally changes their life. So mm-hmm. I guess what I'm getting at is how does your brain, when it's trying to make sense of stuff, why would it essentially create something that you find senseless already? Does that make any sense whatsoever? It's, it's Sense, senseless. Senseless as well, in it, it, it's... It, yeah, it... It doesn't exist in your brain already, okay? You're a skeptic. Ghosts mm-hmm. don't exist in your mind as a skeptic as a non-believer, right. as someone who thinks it's impossible. Be it one that you wake up, you're wide awake, maybe already, and you see a specter. You see an apparition. How is that from the power of a skeptical, non-believing mind when you're looking at it as the description of pareidolia, pareidolia goes, where it's trying to make sense of what you already know? You do, Am I making any sense in this rambling statement? Well, I, just, all I can think of is just that say yes. Make me in, feel in their in their mind, what they would be describing it as, and the explanation that they would have is, and I've said this before, well, it's that undigested beef in my stomach from supper. You know, like <laughs> That's right. like uh, you know the, the Christmas Carol thing. You know, like he like Scrooge. He saw the first ghost, and and to him, you know, that doesn't exist. And, and he, it was just an undigested yeah. piece of beef that he had. There you go. You know, causing, you know, uh, you know, un, you know, maybe a, a bad dream during the night because it's still sitting in his oh, stomach. Yeah, I, or something, yeah you know? I gotcha. Yeah. So anyway, I, yeah, I needed to elaborate just a I little mean, bit. I mean, I, I failed miserably in trying to explain my point. I, I, I hope you kind of get what I was attempting to put forth. Sure. Absolutely. Well, as a pure example, we poke fun at him. I would love to have him as a guest, though. Mike thinks he's a dick. He's called him a dick. <laughs> Zach Bagans always used to intro- introduce Ghost Adventures episode by, I never believed in ghosts until I came right. face to face with one. So are we to take him word for word? Was he seriously like a non-believer until he saw one? I guess that's kind of what it, I'm getting at here. But did he, did he have an underlying maybe, well, maybe they exist type thing. Uh, the doctor here, the psychologist, goes on. He says, the brain also does, Mike, what's called top-down processing. 
It adds information to your perception of the world. Most of the time, there's way too much stuff coming in through our senses. Paying attention to all of it would overwhelm you. So your brain picks out the most important parts, and then it fills in the rest. The vast majority of perception is the brain filling in these gaps. Hmm. <laughs> That's uh, interesting. It's pretty interesting. Does that explain paranormal phenomena to you? No. Are you are you serious? Are you simply filling in the gaps from all the sent? You're <sighs> overloaded with sensor with all the senses, Mike. It's sensory overload, and so your brain has to shut off from now and then just to save you from going mad, and then it fills in the gaps. By making you see a a, a, a dead person. <laughs> Boy, that yeah, that's gonna help. <laughs> Jeez. It's, I, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Maybe. Boy. Well, you know, I know I know that things can get overwhelming. I you know, that's the way my life is right now. It's you know, I overload. It, it, now, I get overwhelmed and so this and, and I don't see things. I break down, but I don't see things. <laughs> you know, I, I know. I, you know, it's all it, you know, in the in the emotional whatever that I have, I I haven't created anything. I am just ex- experiencing things that that I experience. I mean, now the part this this part this example this argument example bothers me because if according to Smales here, the vast majority of a perception and most psychologists, I'm sure, the vast majority of perception is simply the brain filling in gaps. Then how? How the hell are we to believe any of our perception? Right. What is simply being created and conjured up by our brain right now? Am I talking to you right now, Mike, or am I? Is this imagination right now? Is it? Is it all the matrix? Like you know, yeah. I mentioned earlier. You know, it's just. So yeah. I don't. I really don't like that argument because it leaves way too much to interpret. Way too much. It doesn't. Um, doesn't solidify his argument by any means. I'll, I'll leave it. No, it, it doesn't. That's my opinion. Again, I'm not a brilliant psychologist like Mr. Smales. I'm far well, from brilliant anything. Maybe all that means that it being a brilliant psychologist, and I'm not saying anything against psychologists because... Oh, no, of course you know, not. Because they're very much needed. But, um, you know, is, is, is their brain set up uh, in a certain way for them to be able to do what, what they do? But... See, Mi- they're just Mishka's arguing with you too. Okay, so now this goes on here. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you'll have to. I have this is important because he, I started arguing before I read on even further. But this is also making me kind of flustered. He goes on to say, "What you see right now isn't what's actually out there in the world." He says it's a picture your ba- your brain painted for you based on signals captured by your eyes. I mean, I, 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 I get where he's going on this one. But. Or light refraction yes. and everything and how the, you know, how yes. the lenses work in your eyes. And it says the same goes for your other senses. Most of the time, this picture is accurate, but sometimes the brain add things, adds things that simply aren't there. So there you go. There's the ghost thing. Sometimes it's just, again, your brain say, throw, playing tricks on you, saying, here you go, filling in the gaps. There's a shadow person right there. He gives an ex- as an example, when you mishear the lyrics in a song, your brain filled in a meaning that wasn't there. And your brain, you, will continue to mishear those words even if you learn to ri- the right ones. <laughs> so it's, that does uh, happen. It happens, but as an argument against the existence of ghosts, that's a terrible analogy. It's like, well, yeah. Blinded by the light, wrapped up like a douche. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's... I I thought that for years. There's a <laughs> there's a bathroom on the right, the CCR song, you know. No. Absolutely. And he goes on to say, this is very similar to what happens when so-called ghost hunters capture sounds that they say are ghost speaking, aka EVPs. The recording is probably just random noise. He says if you listen to it without knowing what was supposedly said, you probably won't hear any words. But when you know what the words are supposed to be, you might now find that you can discern them clearly. And I get this point because we've that, talked about right. this before, Mike. When yeah. the Ghost Hunters crew, the Ghost Adventures crew, when they play an EVP for someone, sometimes they've suggested what they hear before they play it. Yeah. You always hear it then. You always hear it. They've become, both of them, I think, a lot better. Ghost Hunters was always better at this than Ghost Adventures, in my opinion. 
they would let you listen before they said, we think this is what this is. And a lot of times they would pick out exactly what they thought they would pick out. Mm -hmm. So I understand his argument there. But again, that's painting with such an unbelievably broad brush. I don't, I don't particularly agree with the, that concept of tossing all of these EVPs away as simply noise and this power of suggestion that says, like, no, you're not hearing this. This is what it is. Because, Mike, we personally have EVPs that are clear as day. They were not suggested in any damn mean. It's Debbie? Anybody? Hello? Well, it, talk about Class A EVPs that are so direct. <laughs> and you know? makes sense with the exactly. story of... Debbie's existence. He goes on to say your brain may also add faces to images of random noise. Research has shown that patients who experience visual hallucinations are more likely than normal to experience pareidolia, such as see faces in random shapes. Ah, this is getting annoying because he just... <laughs> <laughs> I have, to re I have to read what this means here. This portion of the article says, Did you see the gorilla? What the hell does he mean here? Well, I'll go on. He says, The brain's picture of reality sometimes includes things that simply aren't there. But it can also completely miss things that are there. This is called the inattentional blindness. You want to know how it, keep, how it works? Well, blah, blah, blah. They show a video here, and I can't share the video. But he says, want to know how it works? Watch the video before you keep reading it. It says, the video shows people in white and black shirts passing a basketball. Count how many times the people in white shirts pass the ball. How many times did you see? I've done this before. I remember this flipping ep uh, article now. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Part, part way through the video, a person in a gorilla suit walks through the players. Mm -hmm. Did you see it? About half of all viewers who count passes while watching the video miss the gorilla completely. I remember this. Did we talk about this at one point? It's totally I, coming I, back. I to remember me. something about it. I mean, but you know, but if they've got these people counting, you know, and they're focusing just on those things, on counting, yeah, yeah, they aren't gonna see something that just pops in or things pops will be missed. Out. Things will be missed. Even things as you know, seemingly obvious as a gorilla, <laughs> or yeah, that, that's setting it up for failure right away. I mean, it says if you too miss the gorilla, you experience inattentional blindness. You are likely in a state called absorp absorption. That's like you just said, Mike. That's when you are so fo focused on a task that you tune everything else out. Hmm. So uh, these have nothing to do with proving if there's no. a paranormal experience or not. I mean, you know, these things can happen. When I, you're, you know, Mike, when you've experienced but, the paranormal, have you been in such a deep state of concentration that you would miss anything? Have you been focused on trying to experience something paranormal that you actually sought and you had unintentional blindness to marry, <laughs> you know, um, to feed in the dogs? Any number of examples. Not that I can think of. I, I, I stand by every experience that I had as a as fact. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Well, I, your, your first yeah. ghost experience, you were focusing on that paranormal program on the Queen Mary. You were enjoying right. that. You were focused on that. I was. But, but yet you somehow it, saw a floating apparition. It, it, yeah, exactly. Um, but it, it is somebody going to say, well, you were watching a show on the Queen Mary. Well, it wasn't a paranormal show, but the par but it's it's haunted. You know, did yeah. you have that in your mind? And you saw I didn't know anything about the Queen Mary at that age, except for yeah. that. Boy, there's a New Year's Eve party going on, <laughs> you know, and but uh and that's why I watched it. I mean, it was interesting. I had nothing to do with a spirit, but I saw that girl and she walked or floated right through the room. So. That's kind of funny. I found another article. We do have to wrap it up. We're already out an hour and 25 minutes. Holy crap, Mike. I feel like we barely scratched the goddamn I know. surface of this. <clears throat> Yeah, this article is kind of funny. Like I said, I found another one. I went back to, <laughs> guess who? Our favorite psychologist, Mr. Uh, Mr. French. That's really interesting. Is he the only guy? Is he on a crusade, certain, you know, traveling the world yeah. to uh, spread his uh, 
psychological beliefs on anomalistic psychological research and telling all of us who believe in ghosts that we're dummies or we've experienced just simply mind hallucinations or false memories, um, any number of explanations. I'm not even going to bother because we do have to wrap up the show here, Mike. Um, this well, may, this might require a part two down in the future. Uh, not so. Wow, well, that would be that would be awesome. But you know, not so far away. Yeah. To me, it's all about energy. I mean, and what energy can create, and our minds are energy. Our bodies are energy. Everything is energy. Like Tesla, he like making the the Tesla coils where he was going to have energy just sucked out of the air because it, everything is so it, we're surrounded by energy right in the air. And he wanted to, to harness that. And it would just be like, you wouldn't have to plug anything in. You would just pull that energy out of the, out of the atmosphere, out of the air, everything that's around us. So in that energy alone, I think what we can experience is, paranormal experiences brought on by just that energy that we we are in within that energy so are these things that that can take that energy and appear to us hmm. you know i mean that's just the thought that i was just popping into my head it's like wow you know oh, i like that if tesla was you know right about his tesla coils and drawing energy and be free energy you know until the government and edison or whatever hmm stop that but, <laughs> right. which is another story in itself but but yeah that's that's what i think so there's what, energy everywhere and it's and it comes out of that going back to the very first thing that i mentioned about like the 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 quote in essence that you keep oh sorry i just hit my microphone that your loved ones who have passed on will live forever as long as you remember them, you know, mm, then that, can, that's, that yeah. can be interpreted as simply, well, yeah, they're alive in your memories, or are we somehow literally keeping their spirits alive somehow? Well, the energy of your mind and your memory and, um, uh, can be so strong mm -hmm. that I think it can, it can bring, it can either bring that spirit to you or the energy that you give it will be able to uh, manifest. So now on the other end of that argument, kind of not argument, that statement, let's say that your, your family members or one family member passes away. And sadly, every one of their family members are all pseudo skeptics and none of them believe in the afterlife or ghosts. Does that person who passed away have no chance of existing? No, that's not true. Okay. So there is, you see where I, the point I was trying to make right. there. So if, uh, if you are surrounded by non-believers, you have no hope of existing in the afterlife. I don't buy that one iota. No, nope, can't happen. So at the same, in the same uh, aspect, do I believe that we can create the existence of a ghost? We can turn our past away loved ones from their physical existence we can continue their spiritual existence simply by believing that there is another realm i don't believe that either i'm mm -hmm. not saying it's not impossible but i don't believe it i simply think that there are ghosts and i don't think that there is a reasonable explanation behind the existence of all things paranormal simply based upon being created by the power of the mind. The power of the mind is a wonderful, powerful, a unbelievably powerful thing, Mike. Exactly. But is true. it somehow creating the afterlife? That's a little tough for me to, to believe. How about you? Yeah, the afterlife is, it, it's, it's just there. It's an existence. It's there. Yeah, it's we, not, not we, created by... We're it. a microscopic part of something that is far more powerful, far more knowing... Obviously, yeah. omnipotent every 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 which way you want to describe it, like we, grains in the sand. <laughs> hey, I'm watching Days of Our Lives all of a sudden. God damn yeah. it! I've been visited by Rodney Dangerfield, and now Days of Our Lives is popping up on my McDonald Carey. Wow, good pull. That was his name, wasn't it? Yes, yes. actually, he was uh, actually on the show. He was. He was <laughs> Doctor 
Thornton? Horton? I think it was Horton. Horton. I yeah. believe, yes. Wow, where Mr. the hell did Mrs. I pull Mr. that? And, Dr. and Mrs. Horton. Doc, yes, that's how they were actually called. I am Dr. Horton, and this is Mrs. Horton. That's it. Yeah. No great names or anything. <laughs> well, Mike, this has actually been great. I think we honestly should consider doing a part two to this sometime down the road, because um, I, I I really feel like we barely scraped the surface here. And we, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's so much to talk about, and and I do apologize for for, sto- for story time with Patrick again. We'll get better with that. We'll get better. It will become story time with Mike more and more often. Yeah. Hey. I can do that. Any final words, Mike, before you wrap it up? Uh, you know, uh, let us know what you think. You know, we, <laughs> we, we say that every yeah, time. We do. We do. Get a couple of little responses it's, here it's and there. It's getting less and less enthusiastic when Mike <laughs> says that, too. Sometimes he's so passionate that he's like, we just love yeah. hearing from you, love hearing you, you know, yada, yada, yada. And today he's like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I don't want to push anybody. No, I get it. I get it. And Mike, and I, I say this. A lot. I listen to quite a few podcasts. I have listened to a lot of them over the years. You know, and I've stopped listening to a lot of them over the years. And I, I understand it. Did I ever interact or respond to any of the podcast hosts that I listen to? No. I, I, I get it. It's not that you don't enjoy listening to them. Oh, exactly. But it's just like, me. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't have we, to. We, we just need a little bit of. We need reinforcement you know, that what we're re- doing yeah. is worthwhile. Re- we need encouragement. and Yeah. And re, you know that, just, that proverbial pat on the back, you know, it'd be, yeah, it'd be nice. It's like you go get them, buckaroos. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> Keep your chins up, little boys. Yeah, I get it. I understand. Uh, well, Mike, this has been a blast. Thank you very, very much for joining me. This has been a good one, man. A good discussion. We'll come back to yeah. this in the not so distant future because it's too good of a topic not to. Yeah, and stay tuned for the next one. We don't know what it'll be yet, but absolutely, man, absolutely. We might for that. We might even prepare for that one. You never know. Yes, you, you know never we haven't no. We we haven't done that for a while. We have I know ones that uh, are great stories that we need to do some research on and and just put out a great show. You know, an idea idea just popped in my head, Mike. How about this for for like let's say the next five maybe to ten episodes, we'll run a little poll. We'll, we'll okay. have our listeners, after each episode, they will answer either yes, or I should say yay or nay, to whether or not they believe we prepped slash researched for that topic that they just listened to. I want to know if there's any obvious difference between the episodes that we did a little work on and the other ones like tonight, where we did absolutely nothing except ramble on <laughs> pointlessly, endlessly. I'd like to know. Is there an obvious distant difference, uh, boys and girls? That'd be yeah. interesting. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know. Yeah. And maybe we'll switch it up a little bit or not. Yeah. Sometimes we, we sound a little smarter than what we are, you know, when we do the research. Yeah. The ones, well, I was going to say when we sound smarter, it's usually off the top of our heads. It seems. Like okay. <laughs> All right. Not, not that we're more informed by research. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Yeah. That's the furthest thing we are. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Paranomaly Zone. Until next time, Mike, what do the friends of the Paranomaly Zone need to do? They need to peace out. Uh Uh Uh-huh.